had to come back from 2-0 down against a man who just makes his quarterfinals here. That's what he does. I mean, that's a heck of a comeback. Yeah, it is. Like I say, uh, I, I always, you know, I, I didn't play bad from the very start. But like I said, again, it was like, um, he was always on top of me, even though I played well. But I keep telling myself, I said, you know, I mean, things might change, you know, if I, if I keep pressing and pressing. And hopefully that um, uh, by putting a bit more pressure on, on, on him, uh, you, you never know, you know. So I always believe that uh, you, it's never over till the, you hit the finish line, you know, so... Never gave up anyway, so. Even with all your vast experience, it did seem to get very nervy, the pair of you in that deciding set. Yep, it is. Especially that, uh, that, that, that leg of the last set. Yeah, it was tough, actually. In fact, uh, uh, I, I think it was the back of our mind, you know. I, like, either way, what he's thinking, I really do not know. But in my mind, I was thinking, like, I need to win this leg because I'm going first. I'm going first on the next leg. But if I lose that leg, the most I can do is to fight the next leg and then you go to the last leg, which he is going to go first. So I tell myself, I say, come on, dig tape, you know, and, that, and the, the dig, <laughs> it, I mean, it's like a quicksand. I mean, the more I try, you know, the harder, I mean, I'm just keep sinking in, you know. So, but eventually I got through, I'm glad, you know. You know, I, I wouldn't even look at him. I, I was watching the screen on the double one, it was big. And, it was, and I would look at the, the, the double one up there, I said, damn, that's huge. <laughs> but he, but he, he, uh, he missed on the outside and he got it inside. I'm glad I got through. This William Hill World Championship is your 25th World Championship campaign, and yet yeah. the preparation for it has been like none of the others. No Asia Tour, difficult to, to move around, it missed out on the World Cup, and yet you can still come here and perform. Uh, I, I think that come probably because of experience too. And, and furthermore, right, I think this whole one year, one year, this year period, I think being home more, uh, at home most of the time because we don't really go out a lot now because of the not not really lockdown but but uh, we were always advised by the company not to go out as much as we want to you know so uh, we stay home more and I think I play a lot I think I play more darts than ever so I think that helped a little bit because uh, I think at the end of the day when you practice by yourself it's a matter of how you practice and how you give confidence to yourself of exactly what you, you, you can perform. So I always say that if I can bring my performance at, at least, you know, to what I've been practicing down to the, pra to the, the tournament board, uh, I might have a chance. That's what I feel anyway. Uh, probably a new experience for you as well, playing with no crowd in this sort of hastily set up. TV. I imagine there were crowd at <laughs> <laughs> No, no, actually, no, no. I, I, I think uh, I've always loved the crowd. I always do. You know, I think the crowd always plays a part where it's going to really help you or it's going to destroy you you know but i i think for some people it's it's different they feed on that on, on that vibe vibe you know uh i do sometimes but then again you know it's uh i, I miss that i really do you're going to take on dimitri vandenberg uh, in the next round he has catapulted himself into the elite this year by winning the world match play you know him from way back then yes yes in fact, I know him very well. Actually, in fact, uh, we we uh, we have good uh, what should you say? Good vibes about each other, friends. You know, uh, there, there, I mean, there's some dart players out there. I mean, uh, which I don't really talk much to. I think maybe they don't, don't want to talk to me. I don't know. But uh, but with Dimitri, he has always been very polite. You know, and I like the guy because I think he's a friendly guy. You know, but but then again, uh, I, I really. Uh, uh, I should say that I think my hats off to him for such a short period of time. He's actually jumped to the top and, and did really that well. Uh, so my aim next is to try to put a stop to that. Hopefully I could anyway, you know. Uh, but, but whatever it is, I just want to put on a good show, put on a good game, and hopefully that uh, uh, the victory becomes mine anyway, you know. So. You manage that tonight, what about you? Thank you very much. Eh? Thank you. Paul, like Dan said there, 25 years playing at the top. What keeps you going, that burning fire to keep coming back? You know something, I think it has got to do with uh, uh, expectation. I think because I've been kind of at the top for a long time, right? And, and wherever I go, any tournament I go to, uh, in the in the dark circle, you know, uh, people has always look up to me, and that is one part of it. But the second, the mo but I think the most important is that 
I have always loved this game so much. I I I love I love the com competition. I love the way uh, the competition has drive uh, uh, the the excitement of of people, and it has become more and more better. And I mean, it's on. I mean, once upon a time, you don't, you don't really see that on TV, you know. But now you, you really you can watch them worldwide. So I think uh, for that instance, I I I motivate myself and put myself into a, a cat category where I felt that I still have the fire to fight for it and I'm still capable and good enough. So, so that's why I carry on. But if I, one day, if I ever feel no excitement about that at all, I think I'll re I retire because I really don't need to go through, you know, I, you know, I mean, many people ask me, why don't I come to do the Q school? I can't really, not because I don't want to. Uh, I, I've got a job, you know, I work with Arts Life, you know, I'm a consultant. And that's why I'm in Hong Kong. So for me to just run away somewhere and play that full time, I can't do that. But uh, but then my age, you know, next year I'll be 67. So it's going to be kind of a really hard to say that, hey, let me try and get a cue card now and try and change the circuit. I mean, it's, you know, I, I love, maybe I could do it for two or three years, but it doesn't make sense for me to keep running around doing that because it's not easy. It, it's brutal. I mean, the, the, the circuit is really, honestly, if you're not, Young and then you not you don't have the drive and you don't have the, the the longevity to do it. For me, it's very difficult to do it. So I got to think about it. Unless Matt make me make, Matt make me a good offer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, hey, by chance. I mean, let's say if I have a chance, if I actually do uh, do well in this tournament and maybe get to the final, maybe. All right. If I if that happens. I probably would think about moving to England. <laughs> With the way you promoted the game and the way the BDC Asia Tour is happening, is still tip darts growing quicker in Asia than what you thought it would? And will it over overtake soft tip, do you think? Uh, I really think, you know, kind of a say that to overtake soft tip is kind of a difficult. Because soft tip is more of an entertainment value to it. Well, steel tip, I think, is more... Uh, the entertainment part of it is not as... As you know, because really the PDC, uh, uh, even though the PDC uh, Asia Tour uh, uh, really provides uh, a, a stage and uh, provides the uh, a stepping stone for people that want to be a better dart player, but then again, uh, the majority of the players in Asia uh, aren't really kind of uh, felt that you know they are capable enough to actually go in the uh, PDC Asia Tour. But again, right. The awareness of that is very important, I think, because the population is there. I mean, look at the population of China is 1.5 billion people, you know, and and I, I know the schools and all that are all involved. The kids now, if they ever actually get involved, I think it will be like Europe, the the the, the, the juniors and all that will be coming in. So I think uh, it, it is a spark anyway. It's just matter when the fire burns. That's all, you know. So. There's always a good chance that it's going to grow to the next level. I believe that. Cool. Thank you as always. Thank you. Uh, just one from me, Paul. If yes. That's all right. Um, this World Championship is the most Asian players we've seen on in the World Championship stage. Two from China. Yes. Um, of course, from the Philippines. There's plenty of Asian players this year. How much has the Asia Tour done to progress that over the last couple of years? Well, it, it has. I mean, like I said again, the, the PDC uh, uh, when they first got involved with the PDC Asia Tour. I think that was the the biggest thing, to, to, uh, the greatest thing for for darts in Asia anyway, uh, because there are a lot of prospects. But again, like I say again, good players is one thing. But uh, if you do not have the chance to actually realize and to be in the same group of people like what you know PDC is or in the in the the, the players championship. You know the tour and all that. Then you do, you realize that how difficult it is. But but uh, there are people, the players are capable. I mean, flipping especially. They have been always been a steel tip, you know, for generation. You know, the, the I know the the the, 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 the guys that have been playing for years, and uh, and all these people all they do is play darts. They play steel darts. You know, uh, we try to push a soft tip there. It doesn't work because they 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 are really hardcore steel tip mindset. And uh, for, for that instance, Philippines is just one of the country. But I really do believe China, sooner or later, if something do happen and actually goes, goes uh, 
uh, the awareness becomes better. Uh, China is going to going to have a lot of good players from China. I really believe that. Thank you very much for your time, Paul. Thank you. Paul, just wondering how much longer my health stops stops me. That's why I'm very careful in my health right now. I think I think because you know it, it's very important anyway. I mean, if you're not healthy, you just can't play that. You know, uh, for me, age, yeah, age is is only a number. Um, yeah, I can still kind of play a few rounds of golf and, you know, and still move around, so that's okay. So until the day that I feel that I can't take it anymore, then I'll retire. But I will not retire from darts. I will still be part of darts because uh, even, you know, like I said, I own a dart bar, you know, in Hong Kong. I own a dart bar in Malaysia. But I, I think more importantly is that I like to become maybe some sort of a instructor or something to teach the, the younger generation, you know, give them a bit of advice. And, and I, I'm sure there are many, many situations that I can actually go into. And I, I, I was offered something to do in China too. And I believe that maybe one day if I stop complaining, maybe I'll become a kind of a, start to, you know, some, some sort of group teaching and all that and start to spark up that, that junior that players from China anyway. Thanks, Paul. Well, the